Hello everyone, so recently one of the big YouTube fragrance reviewers revealed who the perfumer is going to be for his new upcoming fragrances. Uh, he kept us guessing, he'd been teasing us for a long while with this one and uh, he's a, an interesting figure, some people love him, not everybody does so, he's, he's controversial, he's known for putting a lot of women in his videos, known for his love of Ferraris and uh, certainly a, a figure that everybody's aware of in the fragrance community and uh, it was great to finally find out who's going to be the perfumer and uh, so I'd like just like to say at this point congratulations to Chad from A Gentleman's Journey and we can't wait to see what Erwin Creed is going to come up with. Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to be taking a look and sharing with you my three favourite recent acquisitions in my fragrance collection. I buy and get sent sometimes for free quite a lot of fragrances nowadays uh, and uh, you know, most of them I tend to like. There's not many fragrances that smell bad but uh, there are definitely some that excite me more than others and these are three that I've got in recent months, some very very recently, that I've really found to be excellent. The ones that excite me most and that I'd really like to share with you uh, today. So first of all we're going back in time for an oldie but a goodie. It's been on my channel once or twice before, uh, but it's yes, yeah, still really one of the, the most prized ones in my collection, and that's Balenciaga Pour On from the house of Balenciaga. So this one was first released in 1990, and it's really an 80s powerhouse type of smell. Nice box on this one too. I really like the design on that box. I got a 30 ml bottle for around about 40 pounds on eBay here in the UK. And it has a really interesting old fashioned bottle design, but I do like the lid on that one. And I also like the old fashioned style sprayer as well. The notes on this one, you've got cinnamon, bergamot, coriander, thyme, patchouli, sandalwood, cypress, cedar, honey, oak moss, vanilla, amber, musk, benzoin, and oud. Apparently it was one of the first designer fragrances ever to feature the note of oud outside of Middle Eastern perfumery. This was a really unusual thing back in 1990. Oud is one of the most expensive perfume ingredients in the world. It has an intoxicating musky scent that can be quite potent and has been used for centuries in India, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. It is essentially a form of decaying wood but as I say, the fragrance mostly looks back in style to the early 80s, so very similar to um, what Yves Saint Laurent's Kouros, I think, in style certainly, and, and some of the aspects of the smell, uh, the similarities. It's musky, it's, it's woody, there's a sort of dirty and clean at the same time feel with this one, which you get in Kouros. It's also similar a little bit to Chanel's Antaeus, Oscar de Lenta, Pour Louis, perhaps, and Ted Lapidus Pour Homme as well, another beast. That was from 87. So uh, the, the difference with this one is that there is a little bit more sweetness than you'll find in Koros and things like that. So it still has this pungent, musky, masculine, oak moss uh, thing going on in there. But there's a, a, a lot more sweet notes. You've got vanilla and cinnamon and honey. Honey was in Koros too. And the oud, I think, is interesting because there is just this slight twist of something a little bit exotic in the scent, uh, reminding me just slightly of YSL's M7, which came many, many years later and also was a sort of pioneer in the use of oud in men's fragrances. So really, really a powerhouse, interesting, fascinating fra uh, fragrance. Not a daily wearer, it's musky, it's woody, it's pungent, there's maybe a touch of oud in there. And it's an extremely, in, uh, what's the word? Fascinating scent, but not one that you're gonna want to wear, want to, wear to work every day, probably, unless you're very brave. Balenciaga pour on for retro fragrance fans mainly. I really like it. Next up then, it's New York Intense from Nikolai. I think they used to be called Parfums de Nikolai, but now it just says Nikolai Parfumer Creator. I've got a 30 ml bottle here and it comes in a nice presentation with a card listing the notes and there's the fragrance bottle, more on that in a moment. So the notes in this one are helpfully listed on the card that you get. And we have petit grain in the top, bergamot lemon, thyme and artemisia. In the mid is black pepper, clove, cinnamon, lavender, chamomile, and in the base, oak moss, vanilla, styrax, incense, musk, civet, and castorium. So uh, it's actually compared by a lot of people to Creed's Bois de Portugal, which is one of my favorite fragrances. It doesn't share many, many notes. 
Uh, the lavender and the green bergamot in the opening are common to both in terms of the note listing, but the smell is more similar than the note listings of the two fragrances would suggest. A real favorite, this one, of Luca Turin. It got five stars out of five in his recent book, Perfumes the Guide 2018, that he did with his partner, Tanya Sanchez. And there was originally one called New York, not intense, from 1989. Apparently that got reformulated not to the better and it's now discontinued and most people think that this Eau de Parfum New York Intense has restored the former glory of the original New York from Nikolai. So a really, really nice green bergamot and lemon type of opening. Tons of spiciness in there. There's black pepper, there's clove, there's cinnamon. There's lavender as well, giving it sort of a bit of a retro barbershop type of vibe. And there's this kind of uh, musky, woody, masculine undertone, this kind of dusty smell that I associate with Bar de Portugal as well as this one. A real classy, old school, old money kind of smell uh, that has a timeless elegance for me about it and very, very strong performance. As I should mention, did uh, Balenciaga pour on my beast mode that one. This one, not maybe beast mode, but very strong in performance but uh, a nice enough and refined enough scent that I think you can still wear it in the daytime, particularly in cooler seasons. Right up there, almost le level pegging with me with Bois de Portugal, one of my favorites. And this one, I think it's only about 50 something pounds for the 30 mil. And I think the 100 mil is just over 100 pounds, which is great value for a great niche fragrance. Uh, by the way, the musk, civet and castorium might be a bit frightening. That's a lot of animalic notes. I don't really pick up on that at all. It's, they're obviously used in a very subtle way. It smells classy, a little bit old school, but nothing really gnarly or animalic about it. So no, don't be put off by that. Parfums de Nikolai or Nikolai New York Intense, one of my real favorites that I got recently. And the most recent acquisition, which I'm so excited about, and if you saw the last episode of Frag Chat, you'll know this is a very generous present from Claire from the Smurfy channel, Smurfy Girly channel. I'm moving into her house, poor her. Imagine that, what a shock to have to live with Mr. Smelly full time. Um, and she very, very kindly bought me a moving in present of Creed Spice and Wood. Now, if you know anything about Creed and of course Spice and Wood, you'll know it's a very expensive fragrance with a beautiful bottle design with the Creed logo embossed and a little medallion there. And this is the 75 mil bottle. These retail, I think, for over 300 pounds for the 75 mil size. There's a 250 mil flacon as well. So it's more expensive than Aventus. It's in there, I think it's called the Les Exclusive line. It's a, a higher level in price, not necessarily ingredients wise, but who knows, than things like Aventus and uh, Green Irish Tweed and all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really beautiful scent. I think Claire did say she got a good deal on a Facebook group, but I know it was expensive. So very kind of her. And the reason she went for this one uh, was because she's really grown to love it after she gave me a, a 10 mil sample a little while back which I've been using and we've both grown to like it a lot more than we used to. We used to sniff it occasionally in stores and think it was just okay and I had a small sample once before but having worn it a lot on a couple of holidays now uh, I really have grown to love it. The notes are bergamot, lemon, apple, angelica, root, desert, desert pepper I think as opposed to dessert pepper. Don't know what that is either way. Patchouli, white birch, iris, cedar, oak moss, and musk. Um, it's certainly spicy and woody, as the name would suggest. Uh, it opens up with a little bit of a sweet citrus freshness. Definitely that apple note gives you something different that's sort of fruity, a bit like citrus, but it's not citrus. It's a nice, really nice apple note. There's also cinnamon, so there's a sweetness and a spiciness all the way through this one, and very warming kind of quality about the scent, it really, it really is so beautiful. We pick up on a bit of vetiver in this one, which is not listed, uh, but we feel that th there's quite a pronounced vetiver note in the fragrance. Reminds me even a little bit of Terre d'Hermes by Hermes. Uh, so if you like that one, it's really good. It's, it's in the same vein in that it's somewhat fresh, very woody as well, and there's some spiciness, and it's a really perfect autumnal kind of scent, actually, and we're just in September now, so perfect scent for this time of year, but uh, you can really wear this one all year round as a signature scent if you're fortunate enough to be able to afford it. For me, it's somewhere between the uh, friendly affability of Aventus, which is everywhere. It does have that, still has that likability of that one. Anyone who smells this is gonna like it. Uh, but it's, it's sort of going a bit towards the territory of my favorites from Creed, like Royal Oud or Bois de Portugal, which have a more rich, woody undertone to them, a little bit more grown up, not so obviously likable, kind of classy, kind of cold weather oriented. It has a bit more of that, but still hangs on to more of the likability. It's less polarizing than things like Bois de, Bois de Portugal, um, maybe Royal Oud or even Royal Mayfair from Creed. It's really, really likable. Everyone's gonna like this, and it manages to combine spiciness with a woodsiness, 
with a little bit of sweetness and uh, it does it in a really high class. This is one of the creeds that does smell very expensive. It smells like money. So really happy to add that to the collection. These were my three favourite recent acquisitions. Let me know what fragrances you're hoping to pick up, you're lusting after at the moment, and what you think of these three, if you've tried any of them, and uh, maybe which ones you've picked up recently that are your favourites. Let me know that in the comments below. Thanks ever so much for joining me. As ever, I'll see you in the next video, and whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye.